Greetings again, friends. So here we are, the fourth week of Advent. Just a few days ago, we had the first week of Advent. It seems like, doesn't it? Is it just me or does Christmas seem to December go by like especially fast? It's like the fastest month all year, right? You know, you go from Thanksgiving to Christmas and if you hold your eyes closed too long, you'll just miss the whole thing. So you've got to blink really fast during this time of year. But as I was preparing for today's message and I was contemplating on all the things that the lectionary has taken us through up to today, and I get to today's message, there was part of it that just jumped out at me. And I was trying to think, well, what happened to that message? And while I was meditating on that, sideways into my head comes something that I'm going to share with you. Y'all ever been driving down the road, like with the windows down? And you're riding maybe on a highway or something, so you're driving, you know, 50 miles an hour or faster. So there's a lot of noise going on. And your favorite song comes on the radio. I mean, like your all time favorite song, the one you know every word to, right? It's the one that you love to sing by yourself in the car. And so you turn the radio up so you can hear it. And you're going down the road. Well, you just happen to be getting off the road now while that song's playing. You're still singing and listening to it. But when you get down to the stoplight, you realize that the music you've been listening to sounds terrible. Anybody ever had that happen? This sounded fine back there on the road. But when you pull up and all that noise goes away, you realize it sounds terrible. Have you ever noticed that? Do you know why that happens? Well, listen carefully. That happens because while we're back there down the road, there's a lot of noise going on. Noise is critical here. It's important. There's a lot of noise going on. And so in the light of all that noise, we turned it up louder to hear our, what we wanted to hear. And in the process of that, we run into the limits of mechanical things. And we don't discover that till we pull over and, and the noise around us goes down and we realize the mechanical things we were listening to were overextended. They were distorted. And distortion is the key word in all this. Okay. Now, what some of you may or may not know is I spent about 20 years in the professional audio business. I mean, I built sound systems that, in cars that were many decibels louder than rock concerts. And it'd be crystal clear. A lot of these cars, hundreds of them I designed and built. You could ride down the freeway in these cars with your windows down and not hear the other cars, but just crystal clear music. And if you pulled off the side of the road to stoplight, it was still crystal clear music. It didn't get all like that because that's what it was designed to do. But most of us don't have that kind of sound system in our cars. But the distortion is what I want to point out to you tonight. And I want to share with you just a little bit of some of this technical stereo knowledge because it's important to understand and put some of the things in perspective of what's been going on around us and what still goes on around us and is going to continue to go on around us. Sometimes I bring props to preach with. And tonight I brought this. Now this is a speaker, it is a car speaker. I put thousands of these in cars. I'm one of the people starting in the 1980s that put the stuff in people's cars that the kids drove through the neighborhoods and annoy you. I did that. I did that. I did that. But something interesting about speakers here, you see the way it's kind of made here, this little, this is a little basket. And of course this is the cone part. This is the part we always see, right? Y'all know this part moves in and out when the music plays. But did you know that when all of the equipment added, this is a mechanical piece, by the way. It performs based on what's put into it. It performs mechanically. And just like your car motor or anything else that's mechanical, it has limits. Every different speaker, regardless of size, has limits. And when these things are functioning properly, they go straight in and out. Perfectly straight in and out. But when you overdo it, like when we turn it up too far going down the freeway because our little system won't really play that loud, the speaker no longer goes straight in and out. It goes out so far and then it goes sideways. Sideways is important because the distortion that we hear when the music gets all fuzzy, there's lots of different words people use. Music got fuzzy. It got clear. It got ugly sounding. That's distortion. And the distortion comes from the speaker going sideways 
because the amplifier ran out of power and or the speaker reached its limit. It could only go so far out and then it went sideways. Okay? So sideways and distortion are critical when it comes to hearing things clearly out of a speaker. If it's going straight in and out, it's clear, it's a pure message, it's a pure signal, the music sounds clear and fine. You can totally understand it, everything's good. But as soon as the amplifier runs out of power or the speaker is overrun, it goes sideways. Distortion comes in when things start going sideways. Okay? Noise, too much noise can cause us to find things being turned up too high to keep up with the noise. And sometimes what's being turned up that we're trying to hear gets distorted because it goes sideways. So today, when we read our lesson, I want to see if you hear the thing that I heard that's the main point. It's up on the screen in case you miss it. But it's the main point of today's scripture reading, okay? So let's hear the reading. This is in Matthew chapter 1. We're going to pick up at verse 18. And let's read what the gospel writer has to say uh, uh, about Jesus. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus, the gospel message for God's people. Thanks be to God. Okay. Every time I read that the last week, the thing that jumped off the page at me, and this happened six weeks ago when I read it the first time, by the way. He came to save his people from their sin. That's what he came to do. That was it. It's what the angels told his earthly father, Joseph, that he was going to be there for. And to call him Jesus. Now, there's two names for Jesus in this reading tonight. There's Jesus and there's Emmanuel. Let's talk about those names for just a minute because we hear them all the time at Christmas. I just want you to know because remember my pledge to make you the smartest congregation in town. This is part of the little bits. Jesus is, is, uh, 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 comes from Yeshua, which is a, a close version of Joshua. Now, Joshua is, means uh, God is salvation and Yeshua means Yahweh saves. Okay, it's Yahweh saves. Emmanuel means God is with us. So, Yeshua, Jesus, Emmanuel. One of those names is what he does. Yahweh saves. The other one is who he is. God is with us. Jesus. Emmanuel, he comes to save his people from their sin. So who are Jesus' people? I mean, besides us. Everybody. Everybody who accepts Jesus is baptized, confesses and repents of their sin regularly. They accept that Christ came for us, died for us, Resurrected to have victory over death. And he gives us a way out of the messes we make. Yahweh saves. And God is with us. In all the noise 
going on all around us. Just like we're riding down that country highway. Our favorite song comes on. The message of Jesus in today's world with all the noise, all the noise going on. Y'all know, know what the noise, right? The TV, social media, all the stuff going on, what people talk about, what's allowed to be talked about, what's not. Canceled, not canceled, gaslighted, not gaslighted, all the stuff. That's noise. And what's happened is that faith messages have been turned up. And some of them have gone sideways. You know, I relate to that. Because remember what happens when sound goes sideways, right? Distortion happens. That's why that was important to tell you about how speakers work. I, most of y'all don't give two hoots how speakers work. And I get that. That wasn't the point. The point is for you to understand that even mechanical things can communicate the process by which some of this stuff is happening. When the noise gets raised up so loud, the noise of the world gets raised up so loud, and we're trying to hear God messages through it. If we're not careful about which God messages we're hearing, because some of them are amped up. But some of those that are amped up are going sideways and they're distorted. Don't we know that to be true? There's a lot of false teaching going on. And the only teaching that's, uh, that matters in right now in this period we're in, in Advent, next week we're going to be celebrating the arrival of Jesus as the baby. But we should be crystal clear by now through the, the, the Advent cycle. We were in desperate need of God coming to bring us some relief because we had piled sin upon sin upon sin upon sin and bad behavior and all bad habits and everything we'd like to do. We had piled all that up between us and God. I don't know about y'all, but I didn't have a shovel big enough to get my stuff out of the way. It was impossible. The load I was carrying, the sin debt, the bad habits, the bad behaviors, everything. At one point, my life was just too much. I couldn't do it. But thank God Thank God for real that Jesus came and he lived the life he lived and he taught the things he taught and he showed us. He loved us. He cared for us. He still does today. He provided a crystal clear path. It's narrow, but it's crystal clear. See, friends, the message we want to hear comes when we're able to cut the noise down and hear with clarity what God's message is. And God's message is Jesus came to save his people from their sin. When you think about what would be the most important thing for the angel to tell Joseph about the baby that's in his wife when he hadn't had any relationship with her yet and she's pregnant. And in those days, the choice was a quiet divorce or a public one, and she got stoned and killed. What would be the one thing that was so important that the angel could tell Joseph that would make him acquiesce and say, okay, he's going to save his people from their sin. That's the message I couldn't get away from all week. You know, sin is not something any of us really wants to kind of dwell on. Well, we almost never talk about it. You can go to any other church and they probably don't talk about it. That doesn't make it go away. That just means you're not talking about it. But yet, we live day in, day out, for years sometimes, with the consequences of our sin. Because, see, we have the sins we confess and repent. The things in our life gets transformed and changed for the better. We're all loving that part. But what about the ones we don't share? What about the ones that we don't really repent of? Because, well, God just made me that way. I love that one the best. That's my favorite. Well, God just made me this way. He knows how I am. Really? God made you treat people that way? God made you do those things? God makes you act that way? Really? No! God didn't make you do that. You're making choices to do that. Won't you surrender that? 
Most of us have things we have to surrender at one point or another, particularly if we've been in a meaningful relationship with somebody for a while, right? Any man in this room that's been married for any number of years will tell you, there's things he used to do when he was single he ain't doing anymore, especially after being married for a while because they don't fit with being in a relationship. Likewise, some of our behaviors, regardless of our gender, some of our behaviors don't fit in a right relationship with God. That's a little bit we hold back. God, you can have this part of my life, but this part over here is mine. I'm, I'm keeping this. I like this. This is fun. This is whatever. But God, I'm, I'm okay with this part. And see, it's this part we got to worry about. It's this part that Jesus came for. To give us relief from our sin. He came to save us from that. The part that's holding us back. The part that keeps us in bondage to self. The part that keeps us having broken friendships and broken relationships. Arguments with people out of nowhere. Maybe it's driving behavior. I don't know. It could be all kinds of things. And everybody's different. But we all got some. Did y'all know? But that little baby that we're going to recognize next week grew up. He grew up. And when he grew up, he taught us things. He taught us all he could for three years. And then he sacrificed for us to save us from our sin. Even the ones we want to hang on to, he came for those too. So when you find yourself in a world that's got a lot of noise going on, and the gospel message gets a little iffy sometimes that you're hearing. You kind of question, is that really right? Because it's not really jibing with what your spirit's telling you. You're, what you understand when you read scripture. What you hear from pulpits that preach the Bible. What you know in your heart to be true, because God wrote his laws on our heart, right? Those things that we can't really reconcile with the truth is God's presented them. There's a lot of sin lying out there in that. Jesus came to save us from that. He came to save us from the distortion, the going sideways of the gospel message. Friends, beware of the distortions and the sideways messages. Stay true to the Word of God as it's presented in Scripture. Get into Bible studies this next year. Make a commitment to yourself that next year you're going to get into a Bible study. You're going to get an accountability group with men, women. You're going to go on a walk to Emmaus if you haven't been on one. You're going to do something intentional to try to step up your life of faith. To let Jesus save you from your sin because that's what the angel told Joseph in such a convincing way that Joseph was willing to do what almost no man, no man would do. And he named him Jesus. Just like the angel told him. Friends, Jesus came to save us from our sin. Can we participate and let him and live into that? I hope so. That's what this season's about, to understand the why he came. And to why we need that. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.